Praise the Lord. Greetings, everyone. It, it, it is such a pleasure to, um, to see such beautiful people out there. You remind me of a beautiful garden. And um, it's just a be beautiful, beautiful thing to see that we all can come together, even when we're so, so very far apart. Um, I'm sorry that I'm not able to be there physically to greet you all, um, but I pray that, um, that as we start, start this, this session, um, that your, your souls will be blessed. So um, the first thing we're gonna, gonna do is, I, and I have been following, following everything online, um, is that we're going to um, begin with the word of prayer, and then we're going to sing the first two stanzas of hymn number 316. Can everyone hear me well? Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. So let's seek the Lord in prayer. <laughs> Dear gracious, loving Father, my heart is filled with joy to see this beautiful garden of people that you have, have planted here in Kenya. Lord, though I wish I can be there, Lord, I'm so glad for this opportunity through technology to be, be here um, to, sh to share your love with these people who I now would like to, to become friends with because they are my brothers and sisters. Lord, I, we, you have brought us together because we are, through your adoption, through your son, through your son have brought adoption to us through your love. And so we come together seeking, seeking wisdom, seeking knowledge, from you, dear Father, through your words. And so we pray for your spirit to be with us, to be among us, to dwell in our hearts as we sing and as we learn. Through your name we pray, through Jesus Christ, our loving Lord. Amen. <laughs> Okay, so um, if you have your hymnals in hand, we are going to sing the first two stanzas of uh, Live Out Thy Life Within Me, and then towards, towards the end of, of my presentation, we'll, um, we'll sing the last two verses. And hopefully, if we have time um, to take any questions, um, for anyone who have any questions, because what we're going to be talking about is true education through homeschooling. We have stanza one with stanza two. <laughs> Oh, 
Habari, Habari, Gina Langu, Ni Angela Dennis, Nina Ferrara, Kukutana, not me. I hope I said that right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hello, my name is Angela Dennis, and it's, a, it's nice to meet you all. And I'm so sorry that we're not, you're not able to see my slides, but I'm praying that um, as of the next presentation that I'll share that we'll be, be able to um, avoid any technical difficulties. As we have already sang and we have prayed, let's begin. <laughs> As we take a look at our Father, his love never fails. And why is that? It's because of through his Son. And so I want to tell you, people of Kenya, that God loves you, and so do I. Amen. In this presentation, I'll be sharing some methods. Um, <laughs> that I have, have done in my homeschooling, and I'll be sharing some quotes and scripture from the master teacher, Jesus Christ himself. Our roles as parents and educators, the tender years of childhood are years of heavy responsibility for fathers and mothers. Parents have a sacred duty to perform in teaching their children to help bear the burdens of the home, to be content with plain, simple food and neat, inexpensive dress. The requirements of the parents should always be reasonable. Mm -hmm. Kindness should be expressed, not by foolish indulgence, but by wise direction. Parents are to teach their children pleasantly without scolding or, or fault finding, seeking to bind the hearts of the little ones to bind by silken cord, cords of love. Let all fathers and mothers, teachers, elder brothers and sisters become an educating force to strengthen every spiritual interest and to bring into the home and the school life a wholesome atmosphere which will help the younger children to grow up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You do not have to be a trained teacher in the world's system to be a teacher of God. There are principles in the Sunlight Education Ministry curriculum which I'm sure some of you may be familiar with in previous presentations brothers, my brother Sammy have shared with you. Um, and in these principles, you will realize that no world, worldly system has this approach, these methods or objectives. Yet this is God's true way. This alone will truly develop individuals who ever more clearly 
learn by precept and experience what it is to be filled with the Spirit and reflect in the image of God. Our prime objective, if you choose to homeschool, is found in the book, Christian Education, page 236, paragraph one, which says the true object of education is to restore the image of God in the soul. The first and most precious knowledge is the knowledge of Christ. And wise parents will keep this fact ever before the minds of their children. True education, uh, sorry, the, the, true uh, the true object of education is to restore the image of God and the soul in the beginning. God created man in his own likeness, as, as we have been told in these um, previous um, ses uh, sessions. He endowed him with noble qualities. His mind was well balanced, and all the powers of his being were harmonious. But the fall and its effects have perverted these gifts. Sin has marred and well nigh obliterated the image of God in man. It was to restore this that the plan of salvation was devised and a life of probation was granted to man to bring him back to the perfection in which he was, create, he was first created is the, is the great object of life, the object that underlines every other. It is, the, it is the work of parents and teachers in the education of the youth to cooperate with the divine purpose. And in so doing, they are laborers together with God. Councils to Education, 63 point, uh, paragraph 3, and 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9. There are no line of work in which it is possible for the youth to receive greater benefit. All who engage in ministry are God's helping hand. They are co-workers with the angels. Rather, they are the human agencies through whom the angels accomplish their mission. Angels speak through their voices and work by their hands. And the human workers cooperating with heavenly agencies have the benefit of their education and experience. As a, as a means of education, what university course can equal this? Education, page 271, first, uh, chapter, uh, first paragraph one. And I'm so sorry that my slides are, that I'm not able to share my slides because I put pictures, pictures on and I know that when we learn um, pictures, visual pictures do so much more to the brain um, than just hearing the words. So I'm really praying that next time I'll be able to share these slides, um, but we'll keep working, working at it. Teaching lessons on healthfulness, heaven is interested in this work in, in behalf of the young in be, oh, sorry, in behalf of the young, the parents and teachers who buy wise instruction in a calm, decided manner, accustom children to think of and care for their, will help them to overcome their selfishness and will close the door against many temptations. Angels of God will cooperate with these faithful instructors. Angels are not commissioned to do this work themselves, but they will give strength and efficiency to those who, in the fear of God, seek to train the young to a life of usefulness. And I would like to um, share with you books, two books. I don't know if you have any copies of these books, but what I'll be sharing is from Child Guidance, which is a, a great book. Okay, thank you. A, a great book. 
We are there. Thank you. Thank you. And and counsel and counsels to parents, teachers, and students. These are two excellent books that you can use as tech textbooks and training um, for knowledge in how to homeschool and to raise your children. When we look at Matthew 4, we see uh, Jesus being tempted by the devil. And it says that, again, the devil take it up, take it him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And say it unto him, all these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then say it, Jesus, unto him, God, uh, get thee hence, say and for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. And I wanted to bring out that story out to you of Jesus being tempted because we have temptations in this world, lots of temptations. And sometime in the public schools, there are a lot of temptations that our young people can, can um, receive. And it's not so much of a good decision to send our children to public schools because as we have been been hearing through the news and through public schools and how uh, Satan can infiltrate certain things and um, it's up to us as parents to, to direct our children back to Jesus. And sometimes it can be very difficult when our children are in public school and they come home and they, you see a whole different spirit in them and it's very hard to work with. And so we have to pray, pray for guidance through his spirit to help us. And that can be very challenging, but yet um, through homeschooling, um, if you choose to homeschool, it's, you have a much greater, greater opportunity to give your child and to pray your child, to pray with your child so that you can have that greater bond and relationship with them. As we look at the life of Jesus, he was always out in nature. Nature is a gospel in color pictures. When, when he was a child, he did not receive instruction in the synagogue schools. His mother was his first human teacher. From her lips and from the scrolls of the parent, sorry, and from the scrolls of the prophets, he learned of heavenly things, the very words which he himself had spoken to Moses for Israel. He was now taught at his mother's knees, at his mother's knee, as he as he advised, as he advanced from childhood to youth, he did not seek the schools of the rabbi. He needed not the education to be obtained from such sources, for God was his, for God was his instructor, Desire of Ages, Chiropraphs uh, um, 1, uh, Chapter 70. He, he who had made all things studied the lessons which his own hand had written in earth and sea and sky, apart from the unholy ways of the world, he gathered stores of scientific knowledge from nature. He studied the life of plants and animals and the life of man. From his earliest years, he was possessed. 
possessed of one purpose. He lived to bless others. For this, he found resources in nature. New ideas of ways and means flashed into his mind as he studied plant life and animal life. Continually, he was seeking to draw from things, seen illustrations by which to present the living oracles of God. The parents of Jesus were poor and dependent upon their daily toll. He was familiar with poverty, self-denial, and provision. This experience was a self-guard to him. In his industrious life, there were no idle moments to invite temptation. No aimless, no aimless hours opened the way for corrupting associations. So far as possible, he closed the door to the tempter. Neither gain, nor pleasure, applause, nor censor could induce him to consess, consent to a wrong act. He was wise to discern evil and strong to resist it. Desire of Ages, uh, 72, verse, um, paragraph 1. Now, I want to begin by saying, parents um, who want to homeschool, it's so important that we uh, set our schedule. Set a schedule. Um, I wish I had my board. But... Um, this is what I use. I have an easel, I have an easel board here. And so um, I have a whiteboard, which I don't have time to actually get, but I, I, I use a whiteboard um, and I create, create a schedule for my son. Now, um, my son was, di was diagnosed with autism and I'm not, I'm not sure how many of us are familiar with that or any special needs for that matter. Um, but you can, if you're a parent, I want to say to you that, and I could encourage you that you can also homeschool a child with special needs. And by, by having a schedule put out, it doesn't ha if you don't have, if you're not able to get a whiteboard, um, and, and put strips to Velcro, then you can use whatever source you have. Um, if you have a book, you can write out your schedule for your child. And if you're able to, and if you have that bond already with your child, then you can have that child um, help create that schedule for him, knowing that he will be responsible for, for that schedule. And sometimes the schedule can change um, based on um, how the child feels during the day. So you can test the waters in the morning um, by greeting your child and say, okay, my son is Adam, by the way, so I'll use him. Um, I say, good morning, Adam. How was your day? Did you have a good, good, good sleep? And... Um, always have been in that cheer cheerful mind, that cheerful spirit that Jesus had in his speaking. And once you do that, you have that schedule up, your day will, um, through God's grace, will, will flow through. There are going to be some difficulties, some, some challenging moments, but as you learn to pray with each other and pray Pray separately and um, help your child to have that personal time with Jesus, uh, then, then all will work according to his will. When we look at the Father, did, he, did God have a set schedule or plan for, it, for his son each day? The word, the word plan has many meanings. And as we look in um, Desire of Ages, page 147, it says that the words, mine, mine hour is not yet come, which is found in John 2, 4, taking out that phrase, uh, point to the fact that every act of Christ's life on earth was in fulfillment 
of the plan that had existed from the days of eternity. Before he, which is Jesus, came to earth, the plan was already laid out before him. Perfect, perfect in all its details. But as he walked among men, he was guided step by step by the Father's will. He did not hesitate to act at the appointed time. With the same submission, he waited until time had come. And there's going to be days, moments where your child doesn't want to do anything. And it's okay. It's okay. You just work, work with the spirit of your child and, um, and mold, his mold his character so that he, can, he or she can be in the calm spirit. And so, as I mentioned before, um, that our objective is to restore Christ's character into them. Okay. Um, my, next, my next slide shows a copy of my son's schedule. And so, I'm sh and it shows that from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m., um, Eastern time, we awake. And then from 6 to 7 a.m., personal hygiene. 9 to 9.30 a.m. is our breakfast time. And sometimes, um, well, I, I have to take my, my husband to work, so these time schedules are not on exact, but at least my son knows the order so that he can be adaptable to any small changes. Uh, we walk, walk um, after breakfast, then we take a break, then we do homeschool, could be nature. Right now we're working on um, uh, learning about insects and we are using the family Bible lesson, which I've, I see, I think you all are using. Um, we are on the character quality of love, learning of what love is. Uh, we have our break in between. And what you can do, too, is you can find a, a word, uh, what, we are, what we are studying for the word of the month is carry. And so if you're a lover of music, of hymns, there are hymns that will have the same word. For example, we're using carry. And my son, during his morning worship, loved to sing um, Yield Not to Temptation. And I don't know how many of you may know that song, um, but I'm not sure if we may have time that I can, um, can share it. Let's see. But he loves, he loves this song because it's, he, he's learning to associate the song with our word for the, for the month. And we also are carrying that word, carry, to mean other things, like being, showing kindness to his mom and uh, to, his, to his grandmother and to his dad. By carrying, carrying um, a tray of food to, to them, making breakfast for them. Um, uh, we are carrying, we are using the word in our math. And that's also part of our, our um, schedule for the day in learning how to carry. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, my next picture shows, my next slide shows nature is the gospel in color pictures. Nature reveals the love God has for humanity. There is nature lessons found in the nature curriculum and in the family 
Bible lessons. Jesus taught his disciples, individuals, and the multitude, giving them and us an example of perfect teaching methods. The following stories from the life of Jesus reveal the greatest techniques teacher and parents can use to instruct their children and students. The first thing we need to do, parents, is pray. Pray in the morning. Then the, when, we, when we pray, then our children will, will learn how to pray by watching us. You can set up a prayer corner. Um, find a spot uh, in your home and make that your prayer corner and where you can meet every morning, uh, afternoon, depending on your schedule, um, and pray three times a day. What we find in Philippians 2.5, which says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And as we know that Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature, and through his growing up, he always prayed throughout the day, even when the tempter came to him. Pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17. Jesus taught one, a few, or many. The Savior did not wait for congregations to assemble. He just began his lessons with only a few gathered about him. But one by one, the passerby paused to listen until a multitude heard with wonder and awe the words of God through the heaven, heaven-sent teacher. When the parent is ready to begin, it's okay if have more than one child to begin with, with the one that is ready. Teaching our children is build, we have to remember that teaching our children is building relationships with them as Jesus has with his father. Have a, have a comfortable setting. From the hillside, he looked upon the multitude and his heart was stirred with sympathy. He found a com convenient place where he can minister to them. It could be outside, it could be at um, any location that you feel that could be a comfortable setting for your children and that you can have school right there. When we look at Jesus, um, how he ministered uh, and taught, he had a voice of authority and power. But through that authority and power, you can still see that love that he had in his teaching. He had beauty, <coughs> calmness, carefulness, cheerfulness. He was compassion. He had, uh, he was um, full of dignity, full of courtesy, earnestness, friendliness, gentleness, holiness, humility, uh, full of humility. He showed long, long suffering uh, for, for the children. He, he showed love, meekness, patience, persuasion, pity, pure, pureness, refinement, respectfulness, self-denial, simplicity, <laughs> sweetness, Sympathy is uh, tenderness, thoughtfulness, unassuming, unobtrusiveness, and unselfishness. He that has the Son has life. Why is this so? For in the Son of God resides the pure heart of an obedient Son to his Father. He always does not. He always does those things that please the Father. He also has the Father's blessing and deep affection. The heart of the Son rests perfectly in his Father's love. It is the wisdom of the Father to share the spirit of his beloved Son with the universe. 
a sweet, gentle, and obedient spirit that loves his Father's commandments. Christ is the wisdom of God that's the security of a loving relational kingdom. This gentle spirit flows forth from the throne of God through the, through the tree of life. Satan rejected the Son of God and his gentle spirit. His rebellious spirit was at war with the gentle, meek, meek and obedient spirit of the Son of God. This spirit of, of rebellion was passed to the human race. In the sacrifice of Christ, we are often we are offered once again this gentle spirit. The secret to having this spirit is to know who the Father and Son are. This is life eternal to know the Father and His Son, and drink for and drink for the the fountain of living water that flows from the throne of God and the Lamb. And so I want to end by saying, take your time with your lessons. Repeat for mastery and understanding so that your child can, can understand. Love what you're teaching and apply it in discussion throughout your day, daily, because we know that repetition for our children um, is what they need to, um, to understand the object of the lesson. And so if one way does not work, try another way and another until he or she gets it. And you will see the blessings. Uh, you, and you will see the blessings um, from that. So as we, um, I'll take any questions if you have before we sing the next two stanzas of the hymn 316. And then, and then we'll close. So any questions, um, I would certainly be willing to try to help um, and answer as best as I can. What to do, Angie, is this, but uh, we're taking the question and uh, we'll forward to you so that uh, when you start the next presentation, you can be able to tackle rather than us back and okay. forth. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Okay, let's, let's continue with our hymn by singing um, the next two stanzas and then we'll close off in prayer. subject to thy call. We can start together. Let's go. And so, dear loving Father, as we close this session, Lord, we just want to thank you for, for your love that never fails. I pray, dear Father, that your spirit will continue to remain with your children so that your 
whatever was not clear, that you will make it clear to them. Lord, I thank you again for your children who are present at this meeting and even online. May your, your spirit continue to abide and abide with us all. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless you, Sister Angie. God bless you, everyone, Brother Sammy, and thank you for the invitation. Have a blessed Sabbath. Thanks, you too. I mean, thank you. Mm -hmm.